Repeat this after me. Jesus died for me. Jesus died for me. My heavenly Father gave his life for me. My heavenly Father gave his life for me. To set me free. To set me free. So God the Holy Spirit. So God the Holy Spirit. Can live the new life more abundantly. Can live the new life more abundantly. In me. In me. With, with victory. With victory. And if you got total victory today, give him praise today. In every area of our life, he has given us victory, spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, in our families, in our careers. Nothing missing, nothing broken. And all you have to do is receive it by grace. Grace, God's ability to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. Grace, God's unmerited favor. Grace, he looks beyond your faults and he saw your need. The Lord woke me up this morning and he was saying, what do you want for Resurrection Sunday? What do you want? And he wants us to have passionate compassion. But what do you mean? When you look in the dictionary at the word compassion, it tells us when you are aware of the conditions and the problems that somebody else is facing and you're willing to do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the passion comes. By one man's sin, somebody say Adam. Adam. We were all born in sin. It's just a matter of time before a newborn baby is going to sin because he's born in a world full of sin. Sin separates us from God. You just heard a beautiful illustration from Brother James on why God had to look away and Jesus felt the burden of carrying all the sins of the world. The father was motivated by passionate compassion. He had the passion to do something about what Adam did so that we would not live the rest of our life unfit to live mm -hmm. and unprepared to die. All right. All so right. Jesus stepped down from the right hand of God. I haven't been to heaven, but I've been told the streets up there are paved with gold. And it's a long leap down to go all the way from heaven where it's a happy place, it's a healthy place, it's a holy place yeah. where the lion and the lamb can live together in peace uh -huh. and men study war no more. Yes. Right. He was born in a manger because of compassionate compassion. If he'd have been born in a, a, a mansion, if he'd have been born in a palace, you'd have some people who said, well, you know, I can't identify to Jesus because he had it better than me. You know, Jesus had, you know, people always want to make excuses where they start in life. Well, you know, you had both of your parents and I grew up with just one of my parents. Or, or, or you, you this color skin and I'm this color skin. Or, you had this and that, that. But none of us had it worse yes. than Jesus when he started. Anybody in here born in worse than a manger? Some of us were born in hospitals. Some of us may have had a house with a midwife. But God's own son was born in a manger because of compassionate passion. He wanted you to understand that in your life, it's not important where you start. What's important is that you start. And he went around healing the sick, raising the dead, setting free the captives, and giving sight to the blind because of his passionate compassion. He came into this world to seek and to save the lost because God's heart's desire is no one goes unsaved. His heart's desire is that you come into a revelation of not only who you are, but whose you are. And once you find out whose you are, 
And once you find out everything that the Father gave you when you gave your life to Christ, praise God, you already know that you've got everything to fulfill God's purpose in your life. John 10 is very clear. He tells you that the thief, the enemy, Satan, comes only but to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to kill God's will. He doesn't want you to live life more abundantly. He wants you to destroy your joy. You're created in God's own image. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. How does it thank God this week that before you were even a thought in your mother's yes. womb, God knew you yes. and ordained you yes. for his purpose? Yes. Yes. That you're created in his image. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. That you've got everything that you need to be the head not the tail, to be above and not beneath. You are more than a conqueror. That if God is for you, who can be against you? But God looks at so many people creating his own image, looking and wishing that they were somebody else instead of being grateful for who they are. You should take time to understand the compassionate passion that God had when he made you. He made you to be more than a conqueror. He made you, no matter where you go in life, to transition that situation. You're here to change the situation for the better. You're here to make things better because the word says that you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And those of us who are from the country, who can tell us what was the purpose of salt before you got your fancy thousand dollar refrigerator? To preserve things, praise God. You go and take some from the back and you, 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 you take some meat and, and you put it in the, uh, the, the, the outhouse and praise God, you cake it with salt, the smokehouse, and all of a sudden it's preserved. You ain't had no refrigerator to freeze nothing. But when you put that salt on it, didn't it keep it? Why do you think Jesus says you are the salt of the earth? You're here for a reason and a season to preserve the world. Do you know that you are the only Jesus that some folks might see? And you got to let them know that you're just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. But he says, what good is salt? If it's lost, it's savor. What good is salt if it's still in the salt shaker? And you got to get out of the shaker yes. and get into the world. That's why he said you are to be in the world, but not of the world. And tell me, what's a worldly place? How many of us live on a street called Jesus is the way? Everybody on your street, not saved. But you got to let your salt Preserve them. Everybody in your job is not saved. You got to let your salt preserve them. Everybody in your family is not saved. But you got to let your salt preserve them. And the best way that you can let your salt preserve them is not about sermons that you preach, but it's about sermons that you live. How much would rather see a sermon? Then hear one any day. How much would rather somebody walk with you than merely show the way? My eyes are much better pupil. It's more willing than my ear. Fine counsel can be confusing. But examples are always clear. Ain't nothing like a salt shaker, praise God, coming out of the shaker and giving a testimony. That's true to say it's for over 10 years I've been clean and sober. I'm gonna say, that's a lot more than just talking to talk. That's walking the walk. 
Somebody saying, when God found me and placed his arms around me, I was in a horrible pit. I was in a miry clay, but he picked me up and he turned me around. And he placed my feet on solid ground. And upon this solid rock I stand. All else is sinking sand. I do not trust the sweetest frame, but I'll stand holy on Jesus' name. Won't he do it, somebody? He'll do it. And if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. You don't have to be envious of nobody in life. Because the same God that they serve, is there available right for you? Yes. Don't get that Cain hating instinct. When his brother Abel came and gave his best to the Lord. Yes. Cain gave his worst to the Lord. But the Lord blessed Abel yes, because of his sacrifice. Yes. And Cain looked at Abel's blessing. And instead of doing what the Lord told him, the Lord said, why are you looking like that? Why are you looking like the cruise director for the Titanic, as I paraphrase? Why are you looking like you weaned on a pickle, as I paraphrase? Don't you know if you do what's right, I'll bless you too? I'm in the blessing business. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is right towards him. Yes. And that means you can't try to make God your sugar daddy. Come on. Right. All right. You can't try to use God just to get what you want. Right. Yes. God wants to use you to get what He wants. And when you take care of God's business, he has promised to take care of your business. That's not a good deal. That's a great deal. When you give your life to Christ, he gives all of himself to you. And because there's so much more of him than it is of you, that's a great deal. He wants to bless you. And the things that so many people spend all of their time and energy praying and asking God for, God does those things naturally. The Greek word is powder. He's, his job is to protect you. And you don't need an AK-47 if you got God. Have I got a witness in here? I ain't talking about your right to own arms because that's a Second Amendment right. But it's the difference between getting an assault rifle and getting some hunting weapon. God's job is to protect you. His other job is to provide for you. His name is Jehovah Jireh. Look at somebody say, that's my provider. I don't care what kind of job I got, praise God. God is my source, not my job. And when man starts trying to tell me what I got to do, well, if you really want this job, now you got to start coming on Sunday. I'll tell him in a minute, praise God. I was looking when I came. And when I'm walking out the door, he said, well, you didn't put in your two-week notice. Mr. Charlie, in two weeks, you're going to notice I ain't been here in two weeks. That's my two-week notice. Because his first commandments... It's to put no other God before him. And as long as I got King Jesus, as long as I got King Jesus, it's already all right. Because if he closes the door, he'll open a window. I wish I had one or two witnesses in here. And what I love about it, sometimes he opens doors that no man can close. And sometime, if it's not good enough, praise God, he'll close doors yes, yes. that he'll praying that you don't reopen. Yes. And some people are foolish enough to reopen the door mm. after God closes it. Right. But if that ain't enough, he'll make a door yes. out of no door. Yes. Didn't he do it for the children of Israel? Yes. When they were standing against the Red Sea, 
Moses had to tell him to stand still and fear not and watch the salvation of the Lord. Watch him make a way out of no way. Watch him turn this dark night that you see into a bright tomorrow. Watch him carve a tunnel of hope through your mountain of despair. And sometimes what we thought was the worst thing. Have I got a witness? He can make it the best thing that ever happened in my life. Somebody say beauty for ashes. He's just good like that. He's the light of the world. And all he asks you to do is to be his light on earth. Don't be a secret agent Christian. Don't walk around trying to get in and fit in with the world. He says friendship with the world is enmity with God. He said to be in the world, but not of the world. But if you go in the world, like Jesus did, the greatest accusation against Jesus was this man eats and drinks with sinners. How much know Jesus spent a lot of time with unsaved people? Because it's the sick that need a doctor. He told the self-righteous folks, praise God, I came for those who are lost. But when he was in the world, as he did with Zacchaeus, religious folks said, oh man, why does your master spend so much time with the, the, the locked out, the left out, and the have not? And, 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 and one day Jesus went to have lunch with this person by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a tax collector. And in the Jewish days, people hated tax collectors because they felt like they were taking advantage of them. Mm -hmm. But once he had lunch with Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus says, half of everything that I own, yes. I want to give it to the poor. Yes. And if I've done wrong to any one of you all, I want to pay you back one time, not two times. I want to pay you back three times. I want to pay you four times uh -huh. for anything that I've done. Jesus says, this is what you ought to be looking at. This shows salvation has come to his house. Yes. As I paraphrase it, Zacchaeus became like Jesus. Yes. Jesus didn't become like right. Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the world and the world is making you like the world, come out. From among them because you're not ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you around people and you don't have enough maturity uh -huh. to understand that you're there to make them become like you. Yeah. It's not your season for that ministry. Right. It's your season to grow yes. in your light. It's your season to get stronger with your salt. Yes. And he wants us to understand that you're here for a reason and you're here for a season. Yes. And the reason that Jesus came, the father had so much passionate compassion. I go to John 3.16. It says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe would not perish but have everlasting life. When you break that down, somebody say, God, God the greatest lover. lover. There will never be a person in this world that would love you like the Lord. That's right. The Bible says that he loves us with an everlasting love. Jeremiah 31 and 3. Sometimes with a love that makes him glad. Sometimes with a love that makes him sad. But he loves you anyhow. Yes, he it's called unconditional love. Yes. Agape love. Yes. And ain't nothing you can do about it. That's the love of God. Yes. So love. Somebody say the greatest degree. The greatest degree. The Bible says no greater love than to lay down your life for a friend. 
And he loved you, the Bible says, while you were still yet a sinner. Thank you, God. God loved you. Yes. Even when Judas, as we learn today, betrayed him with a kiss. You know what yes. Jesus said? Friend, uh -huh. you will betray me with a kiss. Now, has anybody in here been betrayed before? Oh, yeah. Anybody had a friend that said they had your back and when trouble came, they were way back? Did you still call him a friend? No, not. Or did you call him at all? <laughs> and that's the way we love. But our love has to grow up. Yes, it does. To be able to love your enemies. Yes. And bless those that curse you and pray for those that despitefully use you. And sometimes they do it right before your eyes. Yes. And you're just looking at them. Right. And you could say, how low can you get? Get low? But we speak the word, not our circumstances. Right. We call things that are not as though they are until they yes. are. Yes. We don't look at what we see, but That's we right. say what God's word says. Yes. And we speak life yes. over that person. The word says when your enemy is hungry, feed them. Yeah. Who in here has grown up and loved to yes. feed yes. your enemies? Yes. That's the love of God. Mm -hmm. it is. He looks beyond the faults and he sees the needs. Yes. Because God knows in the world that you're in today, hurt people hurt people. And until you shine the light on their life, until you bring salt in their life and show them how it's done, they will continue to do the things that they've done. But the question, when you're around people in the world, are they becoming like Christ and you in Christ? Or are you becoming like them? God is looking for his people to have passionate compassion. When you find out what a person's Challenges are. Mm -hmm. The question is, what are you willing to do about it? Yes. We're living in a world today where people don't have enough passionate compassion. That's true. Things happen, and as long as it's not happening to them, ain't got nothing to say. And God is saying, as he did in the biblical day, praise God, uh, uh, when it came to a point where Jesus healed the sick, he raised the dead, he set free the captives, gave sight to the blind. The Bible says the miracles he did, you couldn't count because many times people got healed just being in his presence. We don't even know how many miracles he did. Sometimes he just got, like the first miracle at the wedding in Cana, praise God. How does though Jesus didn't have to do nothing? It was his presence yeah. that made the water turn into wine. Yeah. Yeah. When Mary, his mother told the servants, just do whatever he tells you to do. Yes. And they obeyed his instruction. Yes, they did. And the water turned into wine. Yes. And the governor at that wedding says, man, usually when you're at a wedding, you, you put the good stuff out first. And you save the, the bad stuff last. But, but you know, uh, you started out with the, the bad stuff or the average stuff and you save the best for last. But the point I'm trying to make, if we just make up our mind to do what he tells us to do, yes, our job is to create heaven on earth. Yes. And you got to understand the concept of on earth as it is in heaven. It's something you've prayed all your life. After you say, give us this day our daily bread. He wants you in the spirit that you're in to manifest heaven on earth. Yes. Now, it's always going to be stuff happening out here in the world. Yes. But do I have a witness? All is well in here with my soul. Yes. That's where I live. 
The word says in his presence is the fullness of joy. No matter what's happening out there, happiness depends on what's happening. I ain't talking about happiness. Happiness, yes. happiness can come and go. Yes. But how much know the joy that we have, the world didn't give it to us. Yes. And the world can't take it away. Do I have anybody with Jesus' joy in here? that can think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. And I don't care what's happening in the world as long as I got King Jesus. It's already all right. And the old somebody, can you thank God for the others in your life? The other people that made a difference with helping you to know Christ, praise God. I love the relationship, praise God, that the person that came into your life that helped you to be who you are today with God's help. God brought that person into your life and they wouldn't let go until you got it, praise God. They wouldn't let go, praise God, until they could see the change come in your life. And many of us are at a higher place today all because somebody else thought we could. Yeah. You didn't see it in yourself, but they saw it in you. Yeah. And we are the better for it. Yeah. Yeah. And you thank God for the others in your life oh, yeah. Yeah. that yeah. led you to Christ. Yeah. That took time to pray for you. How many had a praying grandmama in this house? Yeah. How many had a praying mama in this house yeah. that prayed for you? that had you on your mind, that took the time to pray. Are you glad they prayed? I'm so glad they prayed for me. And the mere fact, somebody say, you the why. When I count my blessings, after I go to Jeremiah and remind myself that before I was a thought in my mother's womb, God knew me. Yes. And God ordained me yes. for his purpose. He chose me to be here. And if you study childbirth, again, it's a miracle that you heard today because there's a lot of sperm chasing one egg. On, but God chose you. On, and he brought you into this world. Yes. And made you the highest of all creation. And how can you not be grateful when you're created in God's own image? How can you be, not be grateful when he made you so special that if you don't like your conditions, you can change them? Somebody say, you're not stuck with you. You're not stuck where you are, is what I'm trying to say. Some people will live their life in the land of not enough and never make the journey by faith to just enough. It takes faith. I heard one man say one time, you know, even in jail, I got three hot son of cot. I'm like, what? Well, you know, uh, I, I got some tickets and, and I'm going to go lay them out. I didn't know nothing about this type of conversation. You know, lay them out? What do you mean? I'm going to turn myself in. You going to give up your freedom and turn yourself in when all you got to do is go to God with your need and he supplies your need? How much so this time of year everybody's yard need cut? Amen. I do I need to turn my back on this. There's plenty of opportunities out there when you're looking through God's eyes. Now the point I'm trying to make here is that God will take one kernel of corn. And when you place it into the ground, do you get one kernel of corn back? How much you seen a stalk? grow up. And a stalk can have four or five ears of corn. And on every one of them ears of corn, it's a thousand little coins on each one of them ears. He can take one and make five thousand. One can put a thousand to flight. Two can put ten thousand to flight. Oh, yes. But how many know Jesus didn't die for corn? Right. He didn't give his life for corn. 
Jesus didn't come that corn would have life. Yes. Right. He came that who would have life? Yes. You or me would have life more abundantly. Yes. And all you got to do is surrender your will all right. to God's will. Yes. All you got to do if you had not enough to come to Jesus just as you were. The song says I was weary, wounded, and sad. Anybody glad you found in him a sweet, a sweet, a sweet resting place. And he has made me glad. You come as you are. And he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and the heavy laden, and thou give you rest. Won't he do it? I don't care. If you get with him, you ain't gonna need no Tylenol PMs to go to sleep. He will put you to sleep with good rest. Sweet rest. And you make the journey from not enough to just enough. And that's why he teach you, you gotta learn how to trust me even when you can't trace me. Yes, Anybody glad you trusted him when you couldn't trace him? You had a choice between, oh, I'm going to pay my tithes or God know my head, you know, God know my heart, you know, I'll get him with him next time. No, no, no. God can take two fishes and five loaves and feed 5,000 plus women and children. I would much rather trust God than myself going to pay their loan, trying to figure it out on my own. Yeah. No, the God I serve don't do payday loans. And I turn my back on this if you don't want to receive it. The God I serve is a God of more than enough. And once he knows that you're there, praise God, and you're going to trust him even if you can't trace him, he has a land called more than enough. It's a land called Milk and honey. Yes, yes. And in this land, God blesses us to be a blessing. Yes. Yes, he does. And the reason that God blesses you so that you can bless other people. Yes, that's it's not just for you to bless yourself. Yes. Charity begins at home, but it spreads abroad. Uh -huh. yes, it does. Yes, it does. And God challenges you today to have compassion. Passionate passion for others. If you can receive it, give God praise. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that your word will receive to those who you had it for them. Your heart's desire is that we have more passion in our compassion. Father, when we recognize and realize the needs of others, help us to have passion to be able to be your hands, to be your feet, to meet those needs so that we may continue to hear you say, well done. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick, you took care of me. When I was in prison, you visited me. But when did we see you, Lord? When you did it unto the least of these, you did it unto me. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. If you're not ashamed to praise his name, make a joy.